And now we have our converter we're going to create. We want to obviously make this public. And what we also want to do is, unlike before, there's not much of a difference here, but we want to use what is called the I multi value converter. And we will add the namespace for this. Now this interface is almost identical. So let me implement it first so you can see what I mean. So here I implement it. And we see here the interface is almost exactly the same. The only difference is now instead of a single object, we receive an array of objects. Now what we're going to end up doing here is we're going to have two values. We're going to pass it a uh, has text or has focus. So we're going to create a bool and we're going to call this has text. And we'll simply create this as a bool of our values that we're getting in our parameter. And this will always be the first one. Then we will do a bool of has focus. And we'll do that with the second item in the array. Next, what we want to do is if obviously, if it has text, then what we want to do is return visibility, must add in that namespace as well, dot. Uh, so if it has text, we want it to be hidden. However, I must correct actually first here is has text, we should actually get the opposite. Because in this scenario, what we will be passing in the parameters is the text box is empty. So we want to get the opposite Boolean value, thus getting the correct one here. Now, if it has focus, we also want this to be hidden. So we can simply do an or statement here, or has focus. So if it has text or it has focus, then we want the visibility to be hidden. And if none of these are true, then we simply want to change the visibility to visible. I will also add now again though, instead of hidden, we may want to do collapsed simply because this can occasionally maybe interfere with some focusing properties. So now we're going to go over here to our app.xaml and we're going to modify our text block here. What we want to do next is grab our text block. We want to actually open up its tags and we want to get the text block dot visibility property because we want to do this because now we are going to be multi-binding. So to multi-bind, we're going to simply open up a tag of multi-binding and we will open up this tag here and inside we will put the bindings. So we're going to say binding element name input text and then we will do the path, whoops, the path, and we will set this equal to the text dot is empty. And we will close this binding off. Now you're wondering maybe about the element name and that is correct. We actually should go down here to our text box and provide it with the name of input text. We also, because we will be displaying this label behind the text box, we want the background here to be transparent. Next, we want to set our second binding, which is going to be, of course, our is focus. So element name, input text, and we will set the path to is focused and close that off. So now in our binding, we're going to actually be sending these two values in the array of our converter, which we must also set here in our multi binding, we're going to access its converter property. And we're going to say a static resource here and input to visibility. So this is where we're going to plug in our converter. Uh, the only thing we do need to do is go above here to our application resources and we want to get to our local because we didn't put it in a folder and we want our bool to visibility converter and we're going to give this a key of input to visibility and close that off. Now as always it's going to throw just a little fit here so we're going to go over here to build 
and build our solution. And now Visual Studio is perfectly happy. So now we can go down here and we see now our static resource is appropriately binding to what we the converter we created above. And it's going to pass these two values, which will be in the array. Just to make sure we have it in order here, we have text.isEmpty empty <laughs> is expected to be the first. So I'm going to hop over here to our converter and we see that our value, our first value on the array is checking for has text. So now that all that is finished, we'll go over to our main window real quick, hop down here to our XAML and we see our text box. Now what we want to do here is simply access the style we just created. I'm going to go to a static resource and we see our option here for watermark text box. And as we input that, we can see above here in our designer that we actually have our please enter text there. So we're going to run the application. And here we have our text box. We see our initial watermark text is here. As I click it, we see that it disappears. If we change focus, it'll obviously come back. Or if I type my name here, let's say Joe, and I click focus, now it'll keep Joe. And if I erase it, and again, repeat, we see that we have our watermark text box working appropriately.